Let's start with a very simple exercise. I want you guys to think about a typical clinical psychologist at work. For sure, I bet your imagination has produced something like this. That is a typical face-to-face -face treatment setting. Or maybe something like this, this typical movie scene. But do you know that the tech revolution has started to infiltrate clinical psychology? So that in the future, clinical psychologists might become those things, that is, your computer or the mobile devices that you carry everywhere. But first things first, before talking about tomorrow, let's talk about this tech revolution in clinical psychology. Because, you know, like any other field of today's life, psychological treatments are beginning to undergo a fundamental change. A change driven by the hope that thanks to digital treatments that can be easily disseminated online, we will soon become able to eliminate, to eradicate mental health problems on Earth. And accordingly, there are already a lot of digital treatments out there. Of course, the question is, what the heck are those digital treatments? Are they really different from the usual face-to-face -face treatments? Actually, when we look on the market out there, the vast majority of those digital treatments, they can be classified in three distinct categories. First, we have the use of virtual reality, like in the treatment of phobias, whereby people are trained to overcome the fears in virtual environments that it can later generalize to, new situa to real, real situations. But aside from virtual reality, most of those uh, uh, digital treatments are internet-based interventions, including online platforms and mobile applications. And those internet-based interventions, they offer exercises that you can implement in your everyday life to overcome problems like anxiety, depression, or stress. And those exercises, they are things like computer games designed to train yourself to look at the bright side of life, or push notifications to motivate yourself to get up in the morning when you feel depressed. Yet, as a scientist, the million-dollar question is, does that work? I mean, do those digital treatments really improve mental health? Alas, when we look on the data out there, the vast majority of those digital treatments, they are, in the very best cases, I mean, very, very best cases, just as effective as usual face-to-face -face treatments. Moreover, dropout rates are significantly higher for those digital treatments in comparison to the usual face-to-face -face treatment. That is that a lot of people, they subscribe to an online platform or they download a mobile application, they do the exercises for a few weeks or so, and then they just forget about it. And as you can imagine, this is quite problematic because, you know, people with severe mental conditions like severe anxiety or severe depression, in the absence of an appropriate treatment, it can get worse. And so, all together, it seems that there is still room for improvement prior to massively disseminate those new treatments out there. Well, but does that mean that we should step away from the tech revolution in clinical psychology? Of course not. And in contrast, I do think that we should even push further, just in a different way. Because, to be honest, I think that clinical psychologists, including myself, We've been obsessed by the wrong question, which is, can we use the tech revolution to provide, to provide treatments delivered by computers instead of humans? But what if we started asking another question? Before telling you more, I want you guys to do something special. I want you guys to do something fun. I want you guys to do a quiz. Yes, a quiz. As you will see, this is a very simple quiz. In this quiz, some pictures will appear on screen, and all you have to do is to name the content of each picture as fast as possible. Okay? And of course, feel free to shout out. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Let's go. What is this? Forest. Forest, yes. And this one? No. Social networks, yes, thank you. And this one? The Go game, yes. Thank you, guys. Good job. As you probably note, 
all those pictures denote complex network systems. And thanks to the advancement in computer science and data science in general, we have become able to embrace the complexity of those systems. So that, for instance, computers are not able to outperform humans at the ancient Go game. Likewise, we can now predict sudden transitions in very complex ecosystems, like the tropical forest. And finally, these days, it has become super easy to identify highly social influencers on social media platforms. Right, but wait a minute. What the heck do those things have in common with the purpose of this presentation? That is the tech revolution in clinical psychology. I think you guys got the idea. Just like the tropical forest, or the ancient Google game, or social networks, many mental health scientists have recently started to argue that mental disorders are best conceptualized as network systems of interacting elements, including symptoms, but also cognitive, behavioral, biological, and even social processes. So that, as you can see on screen, the problem of a given patient, they can be conceptualized as nodes interacting together within a network system. And of course, for an auto patient, those connections could be totally different. And just like social networks, where some folks are more connected or more influential than others, here, some nodes are more connected or influential than others. In this case, for instance, the node denoting loss of energy. And from a network perspective, turning off a highly connected node will produce a cascade of downstream benefits, deactivating other nodes and fostering the recovery. And as you can imagine, this is just unbelievable in terms of clinical implications down the road. And on top of that, I have some good news. Thanks to computer scientists and data scientists, we already have all the algorithms needed to do so. So that we only need data. And by using mobile devices, just like this one, we can now collect a huge amount of data. I mean, data like sleeping behaviors, food intake, mood, physical activities, and whatever you want. And by using those data, we can compute the model of a given patient so that the development of personalized treatment based on the very model of a given patient is definitely on the horizon. And so, to conclude, the take-home message of my presentation is this. I think that people, including myself, have been obsessed by the wrong question which is, can we use the tech revolution to provide treatments delivered by computers instead of humans? But what if we started asking the following question? How can we capitalize on the computational tools from the tech revolution to embrace the complexity of mental disorders? And although those research programs are still in the early days, they have already opened up a brand new world getting the way we think about mental health. And to come back to the exercise we did at the beginning of my talk, I hope, I mean, I'm sure that in a few years, when you will think about a typical clinical psychologist, you will think about something like this, that is a clinical psychologist providing a highly personalized treatment based on the computational model of the patient with the technology not replacing the human but moving the human intervention to a whole new level. Thank you very much.